Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hey everybody. We're on the last section, the last part out of Similitudes 9. Yeah, in this section we're going to come to a completion of this section where we'll be focusing on the 12th mountain, the white and round stone. Which makes up almost all of humanity, so we're going to talk about a lot of detail on who are the white and the round stones that will be put into this tower. Yeah, in this section we will talk about how uh, the Lord will be doing a pairing away of, of the riches that we have. Uh, we're going to be talking about how um, the children are the roots. That's going to be interesting. We're also going to be talking about uh, riches and how it relates to walking with the Lord, remembering injuries. We're going to be talking about malices as well. Um, a lot of stuff talking about the pairing away of riches. All right, y'all. So we're about to finish up this whole parables out of similar to nine. So we're going to finish it up talking about these white stones, y'all. Be prepared to give your comments as we go. And go ahead and hit that like button if you will. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I will come to you today, Lord, asking that you will continue to impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on us as we continue this Bible study, Lord, helping us to understand what we need to understand and helping us to teach what you would want us to teach. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so be it. All right, where are we at, Stay? We are on 249, talking about the stones. All right. Well, let's start back there on 248 because he starts to start to make a transition mm -hmm. from where he's explained all of the 12 mountains. And then he's going to really start talking about the stones. Okay. 248. And after he had thus ended his explanation of all the mountains, I said unto him, Sir, show me now also what concerned the stones that were brought out of the plain. And put into the tower in the room of those that were rejected. See, because you have to remember, you know, he first started, the stones first started coming out of the sea and out of the abyss, which represented those in the spirit world or those that had been, you know, uh, lived in before times, our forefathers. Then he started getting them from the mountains. Which, uh, to me, I don't, I don't know if that represents like an elevated state because... Each one of these mountains would have had a sort of a plane, and now it is out of the plane of the 12th mountain that we are getting these white stones, and they're used to replace all of the stones that had been rejected before. 249. As also concerning those round stones which were added into the building of the tower, and also of those stones who still continue round. Okay, so remember that, okay, once... They got to a certain building at the tower. They were told not to bring any more stones from the mountains. He told them to get them from a certain plane. And when they opened up that plane, he found a bunch of glistening and shining stones, a lot of which were round in shape. But remember, this, this tower is square. Mm -hmm. The tower is square. All the stones are square. It's built on a square uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. Everything is square, but yet you got all these round stones. Okay. 250. Here now says he concerning those stones which were brought out of the plain into the building of the tower and placed in the room of those that were rejected. They are the roots of that white mountain. So that's a very important part is they are the roots of the white mountain. Mountain number 12. Mountain, the, the mountain that he had all of his praise for. Remember there, let's, let's go back up there and look, talk about how happy he were with these individuals, how they didn't have any malice, how they were kind of like children, mm -hmm. and how they were esteemed higher than any of the other mountains, including the, uh, the church rulers and the martyrs and everybody else. But And now, at the base of this mountain, or at the plain of this mountain, is where he's found all of these white and brilliant stones. And it is these stones that are going to be filled in to replace those that's, that's in, that were rejected out of the tower. That's really important to understand that, you know, those individuals of us who are trying to be in the tower or have found ourselves rejected from the tower are subject to be replaced by these individuals here, these individuals that are white and round. Well, see, now I just learned something because it wasn't making sense to me that he would just go and get uh, stones from just any plane. But so it's saying that there's a certain plane that he's getting them from. Right. The base of the 12th mountain. 
where it's, they're already good. They're already seeking righteousness. They're they're you know they're they're trying to live I guess quote unquote right. Mm -hmm. Those are the plain. Those are the stones that well, she's getting. Well, I remember the round part of them is the part that's doing wrong. Right. It's the okay. world. That's the worldly stuff. They they maybe have rightness on their mind, but the fact and he's gonna tell them that they're round because of worldliness mm -hmm. that's prevented them from ascending a mountain or climbing the mountain okay. but they're like childlike individuals they are uh, they have no malice in their heart but for some reason they haven't ascended into the higher levels of the mountain yet maybe we can figure out who, who they are 251 wherefore because those who have believed of that mountain were very innocent the Lord of this tower commanded that they which were of the roots of this mountain should be placed into the building. Okay. So, and it uh, still hasn't hinted on what it takes to ascend the mountain yet. But the individuals that we are looking at here will be absent of all of the other problems or issues with the other stones from the other mountains. Like they wouldn't have any clefts in them. Or, you know, they wouldn't have any stains in them. Mm. Or, you know, there wouldn't be any rottenness about it or anything like that. Yeah, they're not blasphem blasphemers and right. things, people like that. 252. For he knew that if they were put into this building, they would continue bright. Nor would any of them anymore be made black. Talking about the, the roots of mm -hmm. the 12th mountain. You know, and I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I know he's going to give it to me, you know, give me the answer here uh, of why why they are the roots. What makes them the roots opposed to, to being elevated in the mountain? That's the, that's the one question I'm working with in my mind, trying to get an answer. 253. But if he had added on this manner from the rest of the mountains, he would almost have needed again to visit the tower and to cleanse it. So why didn't he get any from the seventh mountain? Or, you know, the other the other good mountains, like mountain number eight, mm -hmm. you know. And so if something really significant about mountain number 12, maybe don't fully understand what it is, why he's only getting the replacement stones from the roots of mountain number 12. Is it when you get to the 12th mountain or when, you know, the 12th mountain is better than the rest? Mm -hmm. So, is that could that be the reason why? But they're still well, around. But it doesn't it doesn't explain why he wouldn't have gotten individuals from the roots of the seventh mountain though. Remember, he had a lot to say about those on the seventh mountain. Yeah, the seventh mountain was when he talked about how they were the grass was green and flourishing, and the more they um, the more they ate, the more came back. In which the grass was green and flourishing, and the whole mountain was faithful, and all kinds of cattle fell upon the grass of it, and the more the grass was eaten, the much more it flourished. Um, it didn't really have anything bad to say about those individuals on that mountain. Mm -hmm. Let's, two, 211 says, They are such as have believed and were always good and upright and without any difference among themselves, but still rejoiced in the service of God, having put on the spirits of the virgins, and being always forward to show mercy to all men readily given to all men of their labors without abrading and without deliberation uh yeah but so we don't understand why why wouldn't any of the stones have come from this mountain they're they they're good mm -hmm. the thing the thing about it this book is so detailed and it's so sophisticated the answer is there. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, I just, we just don't see it yet, or we just don't understand it yet. Yeah. But you could be, you could be for sure that there was a reason, mm -hmm. and I will bet the reason is even in this book somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in similitudes, maybe in visions or whatever. But I bet the reason why he he had to choose them from mountain number twelve is clear. Two fifty four. Now all these white stones are the young men who have believed or shall believe for they are all of the same kind happy is this kind because it is innocent now all of these white stones are young men who have believed or shall believe for they are all of the same kind happy is this kind because it is innocent so yeah well it says happy is this kind because 
it is innocent. You know, so so maybe that's maybe that's who the planes are. Hey, you guys, help us out in the comments. Right. We're trying to we've tried desperately to understand this stuff. Let's go on. Two fifty-five. Here now also concerning those brown and bright stones. All these are of this white mountain, but they are therefore found round because their riches have a little darkened them from the truth and dazzled their eyes. Worldly stuff getting in the way, you know, um, of our spiritual walk. You know, as one of the reasons why we, we were told that we have to put away the things of the world is because it does darken us to the truth when it, you know, dazzles our eyes or whatever. I don't know. We stretch it. Let's go. 256. How be it they have never departed from the Lord, nor has any wicked word proceeded out of their mouths, but all righteousness and virtue and truth. Talking about those individuals that are white and round. They are white, so to speak, and they are round because they, you know, have the the riches of the world attached to them, kind of making them fat, as you know, as, mm -hmm. as we would think of it. But you know, they they have they they've always loved the Lord. They've never turned their backs on the Father. They they have good intentions and their hearts and minds are in the right place. It's just that you know, like I said, it some of this the worldly stuff is distracting their eyes. Is is uh, dazzling them a little bit. Two fifty seven. When therefore the Lord saw their mind. And that they might adorn the truth, he commanded that they should continue good, and that their riches should be part away. Right, well, look at that part. He commanded that they should continue good. See, that's telling you right there that we we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. It is up to the Father whether we are allow repentance or you know are given a mindset to want to do good. You know, that's what he means by these principalities and powers. Those powers can take you in a whole different direction. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because, you know, the way the father saw these round individuals, he gave the command that these powers not have their way with them so much. Mm, okay. You know, and that's what kept them kept them white was that the other the other uh, powers didn't have, you know, full reign to come in and mess with them, bring that maliciousness that, you know, into their hearts. Okay, so what do you say about when it says that their riches should be part away? Well, now they they are round, and that roundness is going to have to be taken away. They're going to have to be made square mm -hmm. in order to fit into this tower. And the riches that we're talking about is, you know, you know, it's talking about material stuff, material stuff that's getting in our way. That stuff, as you've experienced in your life, and a lot of people watching these videos have experienced too, that stuff will be stripped away from all of us. Every one of us is going to have to be stripped away. That that stuff is going to have to be pared away. For me, it's been twice. Twice I've been pared away. Mm -hmm. One, yeah, you know, one time that you've experienced here in the last, you know, four or five years or whatever. But when I first started this spiritual walk back there in 1995, the same thing happened. All the unnecessary stuff that I had in my life was taken away. So that is, um, I was going to ask you a, a question about that. So, okay, so back in the 90s when it was part away the first time, and then... Um, I would say that you took it back on again. Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? You would say, is that what you would say? That you took it back on again and then it get part again mm -hmm. uh, here in 2014-15. And um, so are we supposed to pray that the Lord would give us certain things again? Or See, because I am somewhat weary or leery about asking the Lord for for things I, w I, I would like to have you know things but I'm scared because and I'm thinking that my relationship if I start receiving things the Lord start quote unquote blessing me with things I might fall in love with these things again and my relationship with him now becomes dull and I forget about him and 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 then I have to go through this thing all over again. So are we supposed to ask for things? Um, 
not at your not at your level of maturity. At your level of mature spiritual maturity, you shouldn't be asking for anything at all. You know, you should be you should recognize that he is the provider of all things that you need and right. you don't really have to ask for yeah. you know if you truly really need anything he's going to give it to you mm. right and so with that you are uh what's the word uh satisfied with the things that you already have content you're content with those things that you already have understanding that if you actually did need something else your father would be giving it to you I mean, you can think of a whole bunch of stuff you need, like tractors and cedars and trucks and water pumps and and uh, I can probably name off about 50, 11 different things. But you, those are only things that you want because if you actually did need those things or have to have them, they would already be in place for you. Well, the things I'm thinking about is okay. You have this engineering degree where we were making six figures at one time. Yeah. Could we just say, okay, you know, we're going to love the Lord, but still we're going to, you know, I'm going to get me another engineering uh, occupation. And, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to build a new house. We're going to get a new vehicle. We're going to do all these things. But you yet and still we're loving the Lord. It's, I'm scared that, you know, of asking for this stuff, this material stuff. You know, I'm not necessarily talking about tractors and water pumps and stuff like that. I'm talking about houses, cars, you know, fancy clothes and the like. Because it's going to, to take our relationship away from the Lord. Yep, it, it actually could. I ain't going to say it would. Um, well, isn't that what happened with you? I think it, it, it was that I was already <laughs> slipping away from my... Uh, walk with the father first remember how the story goes is that you know I was studying for final exams mm -hmm. when I asked the father to stop me from reading the scripture so much I told him that I was addicted to reading the Bible and I couldn't read I couldn't read my homework because I was reading the Bible too much and could he take some of that up off of me well the Bible reading went away that day but it was years and years later that I started to acquire um, uh, riches and wealth. That was that was probably in 1999, but it really wasn't until 2006, 2007 that you know I started you know climbing the corporate ladder and started actually trying to get something. Okay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, yeah, you you could acquire stuff you could have stuff and still have your spiritual walk but I ain't seen nobody that can do it. I only say that because <laughs> the scripture says that you know I only say that because the scripture it says that he has no problem with us having stuff it's just that the stuff gets in our way you know and so yeah I believe that people you know people can have the stuff it's just that I ain't really seen it. Every time I've seen somebody get a new shiny thing, it takes their focus off of the scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, takes it, it takes it off of them. Yeah. But now, what, the one thing I, I do think, the one thing that I think that will prevent you from getting the things that you are asking for here in 2019 is that you're so close to the tribulation. Why would he give you that car or the house or the other thing that you're asking for, knowing that there's a huge earthquake coming that's going to humble the planet? You're going to lose it again. You know, not only are you going to spend time shining on your new, fat, new shiny thing, polishing your wheels or whatever, and not be, you know, doing these hermits classes or whatever, but then it's all going to get stripped and you're going to lose it and you're going to be somewhere crying all over again. Why did you take it away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 258 for he would not have them taken wholly away to the end they might do some good with that which was left and live unto God because they also are of a good kind talking about the pairing away the pairing away of, of his stuff he said that your stuff will be taken away but he ain't going to take away everything you know when when we were about to move down here to Alabama, we went down to U-Haul and rented the biggest U-Haul truck that they got. Mm -hmm. And even though that truck was completely packed and full, when we left the Chattanooga area, 
we had threw away about twice as much stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff, I mean, we had three U-Hauls worth of stuff when we started off with. Yeah, we did. And But how much of it was necessary? And so we ended up losing a huge portion of it when we first moved down here to to the state. And then when we were getting ready to move on to the property that we live on, we ended up losing a whole lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? And even in the first few years after we had gotten here, we ended up losing even more stuff, just, just stuff going away until you get down to where you think you have absolutely have nothing else to lose. There's nothing else. But when you look about look when you look around, what do you still have? So. You still have a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You still have this computer. You still have this table. You still have stuff. They say, well, okay, now why didn't he take it all away? If you look right there in that verse, he would not have taken holy away, he would not have taken them holy away to the end that they might do some good with what they have left. So what we have left is what we are doing some good with. Yeah. Bicycles, mm -hmm. uh, all of these books we still have left. We still have a lot of stuff left. Right. You know, it's just that all of those things that were getting in the way were paired away. Yeah, unnecessary stuff. And going back to your question earlier about praying for new stuff, as long as the stuff you're praying for is not going to get in your way, then you can have that other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't have the stuff that's going to get in your way. Right. But it's now that a lot of that stuff is stripped away that we find ourselves being able to become useful. Because before, we was only useful to ourselves. 259. Therefore was there a little cut off from them, and so they were put into the building of this tower. They only had to be squared up. He doesn't have to strip you of everything. He just has to strip you of those stuff that's going to get in your way and get in other people's way. But you have to be squared. Whereas it was a round stone, it's going to have to chop edges off in order to make you square to fit into this tower. So all they had to do was just a little bit of shaping. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order for them to become square. 260. As for the rest which continue still round and were not found fit for the building of this tower because they have not yet received the seal, they were carried back to their place because they were found very round. Okay. Now back to their place. So they're going back to the plain. Then they're going back to round this land. Now... Is this saying that they're going to be thrown far, far away from the tower? It doesn't say that. It's just saying that they're going back to where they come from. But one part that's jumping out to me is because they have not yet received their seal. Yeah, that's water. Is it the water baptism part? They did not. They did not get baptized. The reason why they they weren't stripped of their stuff. Is that what you were thinking, or you were thinking seal something else? I'm thinking the seal. I'm thinking the seal has something to do with baptism. Yeah, I'm thinking that either either the seal is baptism or the seal is merits. I'm trying. I'm that's where I'm at on that seal. Try to narrow them down between whether it's merits or you know doing good deeds or something that's actually gonna because it's what's gonna cover up the marks and the flaws that's left in the stones, or is it baptism? Okay, but it's saying, let me see, as for the rest which continued round, so these are individuals that was hard to chisel, they, they would not, you know, would not give up their stuff, you know, they, you know, basically, you know, when, when they got their riff letter or whatever, they went back and found them another career or somewhere else, you know, um, they would not be paired away, but it says because they have not yet received their seal, they were carried back to their place because they were found very round. So, what? So the seal, the seal could be baptism. Two sixty one, but this present world must be cut away from them, and the vanities of their riches, and then they will be fit for the kingdom of God. For they must enter into the kingdom of God because God has blessed this innocent kind. Yeah, He has plans on saving all of these white and round stones. Because they're the base of the, the 12th mountain, which is the innocent innocent mountain. They're, they're the innocent kind. It's just that they're going to have to be pared away. But, you know, because they were hard to chisel, they had to go back to where they came from. But they will eventually be back. What does it say? It's, but this present world must be cut away from them. So, basically, the way this is, the way this is played out 
is while the tower was being constructed, while they were looking for replacement stones, these individuals were given the opportunity to lose their roundness and be placed squarely into the tower. But they fought against the paring away of their stuff, and so they were taken back to white and round land, waiting for the purification of the earth. Once the whole earth goes through this purification, remember we're all going to be humbled. It is at that point that they'll, they'll find themselves stripped of all of their unnecessary worldly stuff and then they'll be allowed into the building of the tower. Mm -hmm. during, the, during the parent part, during the tribulation part. Whereas some of us went early and allowed our stuff to get stripped off early, these other individuals, they they're going to keep their stuff to the last minute. 262. Of this kind, therefore, none shall fall away. For though any of them being tempted by the devil should offend, he shall soon return to his Lord God. Yep, talking about the individuals from this 12th mountain. Um, remember, the sin is a transgression of the law. So although they may, you know, break a certain commandment every now and then, their heart is in the right place, and as soon as they realize that they have broken that commandment, then they're going to get away from that, and they're going to go back over to to uh, be with the Father. Well, we're talking a lot about, um, you know, our focus here is on the um, the white and round stones. So it must be it must be very important, or it must be a lot of this uh, is going to have to be dealt with, and. It is because the church is is built up of people who are in love with the things of this world. Yeah, yeah, um, especially in Christianity, mm -hmm. um, that will follow the prosperity preaching that's going on, and you know some of the other misunderstandings in church doctrine. There's a lot of people out here with a lot of worldly stuff. I mean, if you go down to the church, you go down to any church, you know, you don't see the old cars down there. You don't see the old raggedy old busted cars. It seems like everybody in there is driving around in the latest vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they all have on the, the nicest clothes. It's like anybody who didn't have new attire to wear, the church stayed home. You know, they didn't even bother to show up. Yeah, and if you don't have the nice vehicle, then it's an uh, indication to them that you are... What? Not blessed. Yeah, that, you know, not something blessed. ain't that the father ain't taking care of you. You know, he ain't giving you all of these things that he given us. It must be something wrong with you and your spiritual walk. Right. Mm -hmm. Two sixty three. I, the angel of repentance, esteem you happy, whosoever are innocent as little children, because your portion is good and honorable with the Lord. All right. So now, innocent as little children and. It just, it's real easy get you a little child and pay attention to them just pay attention how you know that child acts when, you, when especially when it comes on to a new thing or somebody try to tell them something new or try to explain something to them or try to tell them something you know unlike adults who immediately you know start closing down and be like I don't want to hear you know this or that a child is going to be receptive to a lot more stuff and that's where we're going to have to be going into this kingdom of heaven, especially these white and round stones, because there's a lot of mistruths in that. You know, there's a lot of mistruths that got these people round, you know, and so they're going to have to approach this thing, you know, uh, like a child, like they're going to have to approach this thing um, uh, like as if they had a new wine skin or a new wine bottle to put in some of this new wine. Mm -hmm. 264. And I say unto all you who have received this seal, keep simplicity, and remember not the offenses which are committed against you, nor continue in malice or in bitterness through the memory of offenses. Talking about this seal again. Now, if the seal is baptism, he's saying, okay, a few minutes ago he said that they had to go back to um, where they came from because they had not gotten the seal. Mm -hmm. Now... For you and I, that lines up because you have to remember early in 2015 is when you and I had gotten baptized um, 
So that's consistent. But then when you look right here, 264, and it says, And I say unto you who have received the seal, so those who have received the baptism, now are to keep on simplicity and remember not offenses which are committed against you, nor continue in malice or bitterness through uh, memory of offenses. So being baptism, they would have been cleansed of all of their uh, former sins and now he's telling them don't go back that way again don't mm -hmm. yeah don't let this stuff uh take take you over because it will oh yeah it will it will and and sometimes i find myself um you know i uh envious and and sometimes those people who who have other things that that you know satan put in my mind that i should have but this here is letting me know that, you know, to continue on in simplicity, to continue on being set apart, that if those things are and will only take you away from your relationship with the Father. So Yeah, plus the world is about to get humbled anyway. I think that's the, the one thing that we, we all have to understand is what's going to take place during this tribulation. We're talking about a global earthquake. We're talking about stuff coming from outer space. We're talking about every building on the planet being destroyed just about. You know, so the whole so all this stuff is going away. All of our cars and houses and everything is going away. And that's a lot of the reason why we can't have or we're not supposed to have all of this worldly stuff is going to distract us up front mm -hmm. meaning we're not going to learn how to walk again because we got cars we're not going to learn how to grow our food again because we got you know grocery stores we're not going to learn how to entertain ourselves because we got televisions we're not going to learn how to uh um you know just do basic essential stuff because of all of this worldly stuff getting in our way but then the worldly stuff is going to it's going to get it's going to go away when all this stuff tumbles down on you, it's going to make a mess. What are you going to do with all the televisions and junk now? What are you going to do with all of the junk now? You still got to get rid of it and, and have you a place to live. I don't, I don't. Yeah, it, well, that makes sense to me because it's just for instance, take the people who um, um, who don't know how, because of technology and things like that, you know, kids aren't spending a whole lot of time reading. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a time when the technology is not there and you're only going to have the word. And what if there is no audio? Yeah, yeah and then they actually have to they read. They actually have to read. And, you know, how, how, are you, how are you going to be able to? Yeah. And so if you had been having to read the whole time, it wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you had tablets and you had cell phones and all you of this other stuff. And that's going to, so I, I think it's double. It's double yeah, trouble. Yeah, you got uh, Alexa who can read it for you. Then, yeah. you know, what about when she's gone and it's just you? Yeah. You know, how are you going to get the word then? You're not. Yeah, and that's, that goes for not only word, but that goes for water, that goes for food, mm -hmm. that goes for clothing, that goes for shelter. You know, everything. We basically have to learn, relearn the primitive stuff again. And I, I think that this is how why it's important to have uh, like-minded friends, or being a you know we was talking about communities and tribal tribes to where you aren't put in a situation where you're envious. Everybody's like-minded. Everybody is doing the same thing, and so nobody's envious of anybody else because everybody's on one accord. Nobody's gonna come around with right. a brand new shiny, shiny thing, hold yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. You ain't it. got none. You ain't got this. You yeah. Ain't got that. yeah. Okay. 265. But become one spirit and provide remedies for those evil rents and remove them from you, that the Lord of the sheep may rejoice at it. For he will rejoice if he shall find all hold. Okay, this makes sense when you read 264 and 265 together. It does? Let me see. And say unto all. And I say unto all you who have received this seal, keep simplicity and remember not the offenses which were committed against you, nor continue in malice or in bitterness through the memories of offenses, but become one spirit and provide remedies for these evil rents and remove them from you, that the Lord of the sheep may rejoice at it, for he will rejoice if ye shall find all whole. Yeah, so he's, ta he's talking about, like up there in 264, how, you know... 
remembering offenses that are committed against you, malice and bitterness. Yeah, we you, that part, like we mentioned a few seconds ago, that stuff will affect you. It will harm you if, if there's other people. You know, even though you've been baptized, even though you've been cleansed, even though you've gotten this seal, but yet you find yourself around people who are committing uh, crimes against you or have malice against you or bitterness against you, that stuff will affect you. You know, and so that's what he's saying. You have to, you know, you have to become one spirit. The, the, the spirit of the man that's going to be in the tower is not going to have any of this. He's not going to remember injuries or, you know, he's not going to have any malice or remember any bitterness. So you ha have to become like that individual that's inside of the tower. Mm -hmm. you know? 266. But if any of these sheep shall be found scattered away, woe shall be to the shepherd. But if the shepherd themselves shall be scattered, what will they answer to? The Lord of the sheepfold? Will they say that they are troubled by the sheep, but they shall not be believed? Yeah. So those individuals who, you know, like Hermes, who now have this responsibility of teaching this message, have responsibility of teaching truth, is the shepherds that he's talking about. And he's saying, woe to the, the shepherds who have their sheep scattered or woe to the shepherds who are scattered themselves. There are going to be a lot of, there's a lot of shepherds scattered now where they blame the sheep from having them scattered. Mm -hmm. It's like if the sheep hadn't been so daggone hard headed, if they hadn't been so tough, then, you know, the ministry could have, could have took off. Could have, we could have had a ministry here, but these guys were so hard hearted that, you know, forget it. You know, we're not even, we don't even have a ministry. So what he's saying, so or is he saying that you're not going to be, the shepherd is not going to be able to blame the sheep? Yeah, you're not going to be able to blame the sheep. So you remember when we said that, you know, some of these, these shepherds are good, but they lost their way because they gave over to what their congregation was, yeah. was saying. And so they went, they changed their message from, you know, saying, exactly what scripture's saying to now they're 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 wavering a little bit so is he saying that sorry you shouldn't have did it you know you shouldn't have sh shouldn't have wavered towards your conversation congregation yeah well you know you're not going to be able to use that as an excuse you're not going to be able to say yeah father i would have given your message the way you gave it to me except the congregation all got up and walked out every time I did it. Every time I start telling them about uh, the commandments or the mandates or the beatitudes, you know, I lost half the congregation. And so that's why, you know, you're not going to be able to use that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but he's talking about ones that are actually scattered. For me, when a shepherd to be to have to for the shepherd to be scattered, meaning he's lost his way and he's gone off, you know, doing something completely, totally different. Or when his sheep is scattered, maybe he may be still, you know, there in the pulpit, but ain't nobody coming to church on Sunday because they all, they don't want nothing to do with that. Right. You know, they don't want nothing to do with him because, you know, his sheep are scattered or whatever. 267. For it is an incredible thing that the shepherd should suffer for his flock, and he shall be the more punished for his lie. It says for his lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, he, he's blaming the flock for for the problems that he's having with the ministry, saying that, you know, it's because of them and he's going to be punished for it. He's going he's going to be harmed for it. It's going to it's going to be detrimental to, you know, his his spiritual walk going forward because he blamed it because he's saying that, you know, that it's the sheep's fault. Mm -hmm. 268. Now I am the shepherd, and especially must give an account of you. Yeah, this is the angel of repentance talking here to Hermas, and he is a shepherd himself. Remember, he is over all of the repentance of humanity, and so we're all under, we're all part of his shepherdhood, I guess. Mm -hmm. We're all members of his sheep. All right. Two sixty nine. Wherefore, take care of yourself while the tower is yet building. The Lord dwells in those that love peace. For peace is beloved, but he is far off from the contentious and those who are full of malice. 
Is he comparing this to the shepherd up there that lost his flock, or is he going on talking about, you know, some other individuals? He's saying, take care of yourself while the tower is still in the building process, I think. And, and once again, reiterating um, to do it now. Yeah, while the tower is still being still built. built. But then he goes, he said, the Lord, the Lord dwells in those that love peace, for peace is beloved. But he is far from the contentious and those who are full of malice. That's kind of what this is all about, really. You know, it's these individuals that, you know, have malice or they're contentious or not really peaceful individuals that are on the cusp of being in this tower. These are the ones that, you know, it's not really sure whether they're, they're, they're going to get into the tower or not. Remember those with the fruit and the green and and those those going to people are going to be in the tower. Mm -hmm. Those that are blasphemous, they ain't going to be in the tower. So it's kind of talking to these ones in the middle that hey, you guys have a shot, but you have to you have to be cautious. You have to put away stuff like contentiousness and maliciousness. Those 12 women. Yeah, you have to, yeah. 270. Wherefore restore unto him the spirit entire as you received it. For if thou should give unto a fuller a garment new and whole, thou wilt expect to receive it whole again. If therefore the fuller shall restore it unto thee torn, what is thou receive it? Talking about our spirits, mm -hmm. comparing our spirits to garments, whereas the Father gave us a, a gave us our spirit, you know, they were perfectly clean. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point, you know, all of us dwelt in the spirit world. Before Adam came down here, Adam was the first uh, person that was actually brought from the spirit world into the third dimension and we've all been coming through ever since but on our first trip through here we actually had purified spirits they just didn't have any merits associated with them we needed good deeds we needed stuff going on in order for us to be able to get to the kingdom of heaven well it is most of us, as soon as we got here, the first thing we did was mess up our, our mess up that Holy Spirit. We defiled it, we tainted it, and made it impure. And that's what he's saying here. You know, we have to get this this spirit back pure. We have to get it back into a holy state before we turn it back in. Or, you know, the Father's going to be a little bit upset with us, you know. And there's a possibility that he won't even accept it. Well, now, he's, yeah, he... he he, he right, yeah. for the tribulation, yeah, he's gonna stick it through the washing machine first. It's going through the dry cleaners first. He's gonna accept it eventually, but it's gonna be cleared up. It's gonna be cleaned up again. Yeah, hot water. Yeah, it's gonna be some <laughs> hot water. Yeah, bleach and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Two seventy one. Wouldest thou not presently be angry and reproach him, saying, I gave my garment to thee whole. Why hast thou rent it and made it useless to me? Now it is of no use to me, by reason of the rent which thou hast made in it. What is thou not say all this to a fuller for the rent which he made in thy garment? Yep. So you know, if it was hard, if you gave somebody your jacket for them to clean, and they came back and they just tore it all up, wouldn't you be upset about it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the way our spirits are. Yeah, the Father has given us a spirit, as you said, unpolluted, undefiled, and He wants that spirit to come back to him unpolluted and undefiled right same way he gave it to us cheerful happy mm -hmm. not lying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 272 if therefore thou wouldest be concerned for thy garment and complain that thou hast not received it whole what thinkest thou that the lord would do who gave his spirit to thee entire and thou hast rendered him altogether unprofitable so that he can be of no use unto his lord for being corrupted by thee, he is no longer profitable to him. See, the Father, he intends for us all to be saved eventually. We're all going to make it to the higher mansions eventually. There's some who are going to follow his path that he laid out, and they'll get there sooner. There's others who decided they wanted a different path, and they're going to take longer to get there. But they're all going to get there eventually. And the thing about it, you know, the spirits are all going to be cleansed. When we do get there, when we all, you know, get to that point, we're all we're all going to be purified of of our stains, of our rents. All of that stuff is going to be fixed and put back together. Two seventy three. Will not therefore the Lord do the same concerning His Spirit, by reason of thy deed? Undoubtedly, said I, He will do the same to all those 
whom he shall find to continue in the remembrance of in injuries. Remembrance of injuries. How important that is that we do not remember the injuries of other people. And, you know, that's, that's kind of like a child. You know, the, one yeah. of the things about, you know, that child is he seems to be a little bit, I don't want to say forgetful or whatever, but he doesn't remember the, the injuries and stuff that we did to him. You know, he, 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 and, you know, that's the way we all have to be where we are accepting uh, the actions of others, being patient with them, and not letting them bother us, and they're definitely not remembering those injuries that they do up against us. Yeah. 274. Tread not then underfoot, he said, his mercy, but rather honor him, because he is so patient with respect of your offenses, and not like one of you, but repent, for that will be profitable for you. Well, now, this is a, a very important lesson that we have to understand is that in order for us to get forgiveness of our sins, we have to forgive others. You know, if, we, if we're remembering the, the events or we're remembering the injuries that people have committed against us, then our injuries are going to be remembered as well. You know, and, you know, I, I don't know if that's stressed enough how important that is, you know, because there's a lot of people walking around thinking that, you know, the father's forgiving me of what I've done, but yet we're not forgiving our brother of what he's done. We have to be forgiven of our brother if we want our father to forgive us. Well, you know, the Messiah tells us that before we can come and ask for forgiveness of from him, we have to go to our brother and ask him to forgive us. And then the next step is to go to Messiah. But so many times that when somebody, we do something to somebody or somebody do to us, our first step is we forget the first step. We just go to, the, well, I asked the Father to forgive me and he forgave me then, you know, everything is all right. No, he said that there's a process to it. You got to go to your brother first and ask for forgiveness and then come to him. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. want to bypass the hard part. And so that's why he's bringing this stuff out about remembering injuries is because that's one of the main things. That's one of the main things, and it's in, and that's one of the most serious mm -hmm. things is remembering the injuries. Because there's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff, and they're going to continue to do a lot of stuff. They've done a lot of stuff, and they're going to continue doing a lot of stuff until the earth is purified. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things that's going to be get really severe is the level of maliciousness going on in the world. And if you can't stop remembering the injuries, and yet you know, you're getting as, 10 times as many injuries as you was getting a, just a little while ago. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. It's going to, it's going, if you can't stop remembering the injuries, that's going to be one thing that's going to end up killing you. It's going to end up costing you your life. Yeah. yeah. Because you couldn't stop remembering those injuries that were being, those things that were being done to you. Mm -hmm. Persecutions, slanderings, lies, backbiting, all kinds of stuff. 275, all these things which are above written, I, the shepherd, the angel of repentance, have shown and spoken to the servants of God. All right, so now he's about to wrap this thing up. He's told them about similitudes. He's told them about commands and mandates. And he's given a wealth of information. And so now he's about to wrap this thing up. If therefore ye shall believe and hearken to these words, and shall walk in them, and shall correct your ways, ye shall live. But if you shall continue in malice, and in the remembrance of injuries, no such sinners shall live unto God. Boiling down to maliciousness and the remembering mm -hmm. of injuries. Right. Um, you know, remember that when, when, when they asked the Messiah about the, the main two commandments, his first commandment was to, uh, what was it? Love the, the Lord, love the Lord, with all the heart, yeah, yeah. Like and then the second one was what? Do unto others as you would have them yeah. do unto you. And that's where your maliciousness and your remembering of injuries will get in the way. You know, it, it, those those two commandments basically sums up all of the all of Moses's laws there, but maliciousness and remembrance of ign of injuries will m make it all fall apart. It's going to crash it all. 277. All these things which were to be spoken by me, I have thus delivered unto you. Then the shepherd said unto me, Hast thou asked all things of me? 
I answered, sir, I have. All right, so he's basically wrapping it up. We're almost finished with it. Um, he's asking him, you know, you, you did ask me all of your questions, didn't it? Turns out Hermes has forgotten something. What's the way they say? 278. Why then, said he, hast thou not asked concerning the spaces of these stones that were put into the building, that I may explain that also unto thee? I answered, Sir, I forgot it. Here then, said he, concerning these also. Now remember, it was the spaces and stuff that was a result of having put back in the rejected stones. You have the stones that were rejected. They had to be um, chiseled away, parred away. They had to be fixed. And then they were put back into the tower, but they still had seams. They still had imperfections and such. Mm -hmm. And he used slick lime and some type of mortar in order to cleanse away all of those, those, those imperfections. That's what made the tower look as if it was one stone. 279. They are those who have now heard these commands and have repented with all their hearts. I'm talking about those rejected stones, the ones that were put back into the, the ones that were put back into the tower, and maybe even those that were uh, round and had to be pared away and were put back into the tower. And when the Lord saw that their repentance was good and pure, and that they could, could continue in it, He commanded their former sins to be blotted out, for these spaces were their sins, and they are therefore made even that they might not appear. Okay, so it doesn't really give us an answer on what it was. It's just a command from the Father that they be cleaned up, that the sins and stuff be blotted away, so it doesn't really tell us what it is. But I believe it's the, I believe it's the um, either merits or baptism. I more strongly believe that it's baptism, um, that our sins are blotted away in, in baptism. We're given a fresh, clean start. At least that's what I've experienced in my own personal life and some other people I've saw too. That is that our sins are cleared away through through water baptism. Mm. Well, we'll let um, those who um, see what other people have to say. So once again, we're going to ask that if anybody have any um, any thoughts about it, to just leave them in the comment section. Yeah, y'all yeah, leave it there in the comment section. All right, well, that's going to do it for this section. Oh, my goodness. We have finished nine. Mm -hmm. We finished nine. This was how many? This was 280 verses. 200, yep, 280 verses. And so we have 10 is left, which is actually the closing out of the thing. I don't know. We'll, we'll save that for another day. Closing out of Hermes. But we're going to go back and um, I think you said, mentioned that we're going to do it again. Yeah, we ain't going to do it a whole thing not again. Gonna do, definitely gonna not do it. We're going to do it a little <laughs> bit differently. Well, we still got to try to do the chronological order. We still got to try to draw it out. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot to it, you know. Um, and so we'll, we'll end up doing something. We ain't going to do it this way. We ain't going to do a verse-by-verse -verse study, I don't think. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely going to do something. thing about it, Hermes is a book. You can spend the rest of your life on this book if you wanted to. Yeah, and live by it. The thing I like and the thing that I'm learning is that you can definitely live by everything Hermes is saying. It's a today's book. Yeah. It's not a book that you put and say, oh, that was back then. It's a today's book for now living. Yeah, and you, you can make your whole ministry about this one book, you know. And I, yeah. Glad you guys finished out uh, similar to nine. If you actually finished out and heard all the similar to nine, give a shout out. Give yeah, yourself a we'll pat on the back. And say, yeah, I went there. I suffered every one of those. <laughs> I suffered. <laughs> we suffered every one. We made it through all of them. This sure is somebody. It's about three or four people. <laughs> I'm not, I'm sure, I bet it ain't no more than about three or four people that have sat through every single class, class. and listened to every one of these. Mm. Yeah. I bet, it, I bet it's three or four of them. You guys somehow let us know, you know. Yeah, we might have to send out some kind of gift or something. <laughs> yeah, we need we need a Hermes qualification certificate or yeah. something like that. I'm now Hermes qualified. <laughs>